Hi. Today we're going to start talking about uh, thermal physics and we'll start with a pretty simple introduction. We'll talk about temperature and we have two goals here. One is to simply talk about temperature and different scales with which we measure temperature and our second goal is to introduce the idea of thermal expansion which is the idea that things change size when they change temperature. Okay, so we'll start in on temperature, and the first thing we should talk about is, you know, what is it? So what do you think temperature is? What's a good definition? So we're going to define temperature as a measure of the average internal energy of an object or a system. Well, that means we now have to define internal energy. So internal energy is energy associated with the motion, in other words, that's kinetic energy, of the atoms and or, and or the molecules that make up the object or system. Okay? So then we can reformulate our definition of temperature. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the atoms and molecules making up an object or a system. And we will do more on this next time, that's for sure. Okay, so we have a lovely thermometer here. Looks like it's uh, measuring the temperature on a fairly cold day. It's at the freezing point of water, in fact, which is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius, and around 273 Kelvin. And so we're going to stick mainly in our uh, physics class in the Celsius and Kelvin scales. Uh, but, you know, we're used to talking about the Fahrenheit scale because uh, the United States still hasn't caught up with the rest of the world and switched over to the uh, Celsius scale. So one nice thing about Celsius and Kelvin is that um, you change by one degree. It's the same change on each scale. So one degree Celsius is the same as one Kelvin. And so the scales are essentially the same. They're just different by 273. Okay, so uh, the Kelvin scale, of course, has no negative temperatures at all. Absolute zero is zero Kelvin, where the Celsius scale at zero is set to the freezing point of water. And if you want to compare the Celsius and Fahrenheit scales, uh, one thing to notice is that they agree when the temperature is minus 40 degrees. So minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit is the same as minus 40 degrees Celsius. And then if you go up by, say, uh, 18 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale, you get to minus 22. You've gone up by minus 10, uh, sorry, you've gone up by plus 10 to minus 30 on the Celsius scale. So 18 degrees Fahrenheit, is, the change of 18 degrees Fahrenheit, I'm sorry, is the same as a change of 10 degrees Celsius. So change of 1 degree Celsius is the same as a change by 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so we get this 1.8 to 1 ratio, which is a 9 to 5 ratio. So then you see this factor of 9 or 5s or 9 over 5 or 5 or 9 in the conversion equation. So if you know the temperature in Fahrenheit, you subtract 32 degrees from that, multiply the result by 5 degrees Celsius divided by 9 degrees Fahrenheit, and that will get you the Celsius temperature. If you want to go the other way, so this is basically the same equation, just rearranged. If you know the temperature in Celsius, you multiply that by 9 degrees Fahrenheit and divide by 5 degrees Celsius. Add that result to 32 degrees Fahrenheit and you will get the Fahrenheit temperature. So it's pretty easy to convert back and forth between Celsius and Fahrenheit. And of course you can also go between uh, Fahrenheit and Kelvin or Kelvin and, and Fahrenheit if you'd like. But those are the common scales we used in the, in the United States um, and in science. And here's something to remember. If you have equations that involve temperature, then if your equation has a T in it, okay, not a delta T, but a T, then you want to use an absolute temperature. And generally, we're going to use uh, the Kelvin scale. If your equation has a delta T in it instead, then you can use Celsius or Kelvin because, of course, a change in temperature is the same on either the Celsius or the Kelvin scales. Okay? 
So we're doing our, our work. We're generally going to stick with Celsius or Kelvin, but if you've got a T in your equation, use Kelvin. Delta T, you can get away with either one. Now, how do we measure temperature? Well, of course, we use a, something called a thermometer to measure temperature. And there's all sorts of different types of thermometers, and every one of them uses the fact that a material property will change depending on what the temperature is. Okay, so many examples of such properties, temperature-dependent properties, that we can exploit to use in thermometers. So we can use uh, pressure in a sealed container of gas, for instance. Okay, you know the ideal gas law, so pressure and temperature are linearly related, proportional to one another, in other words. Here's a much more common thing, volume occupied by a liquid. So most of your standard alcohol thermometers these days use that. So you uh, heat, heat the thing up and the volume it occupies generally goes up. You can even use uh, electrical properties. So you can have voltages that are generated across junctions of different metals. That's, that's uh, known as a thermocouple. And there's lots of other things that uh, can depend on temperature and thus can be used in thermometers. But these are the big ones. Okay, so let's go on and talk about thermal expansion a little bit. And we'll start by talking about linear expansions. Let's just say we have a one-dimensional object, just a long rod, for, in other words. And what happens is you observe that the length changes depending on what the temperature is. So in general, most materials uh, get bigger. They expand when they're heated. And we're going to use a simple model here to model this temperature change. And we can get away with this, this simple model as long as the change in temperature isn't too big. So what we're going to say is that each dimension of the object experiences a change in length that is proportional to the change in temperature. So we can use this proportionality uh, as long as the temperature change isn't too big. Okay, so we can express this as an equation. The change in length is the original length, L0, times some constant alpha, which depends on the material, times delta T. Or an equivalent rate way to write this is the new length is the old length multiplied by 1 plus alpha delta T. And again, L0 is the original length, and alpha here is known as the coefficient of linear expansion. Now, we certainly used alpha for uh, other things like uh, angular acceleration. This is a whole new use of the, of the symbol alpha, a whole different thing. And it just depends on the material, this coefficient of linear expansion. So here's a table of uh, four materials with their alphas. And note these are pretty small numbers, right? These are actually times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. So in our chart, aluminum has the biggest uh, expansion coefficient, 23 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree Celsius. Then you get copper at 17, iron is at 12, and glass is at 8.5. Okay, so iron versus aluminum, you've got roughly a factor of two there, and uh, glass to copper, in fact, you've got a factor of two there as well. Okay, so basically, the bigger the temperature change, the bigger the change in length. And we can expand this out to two dimensions or three dimensions. So let's go all the way to three dimensions. And now we're going to do volume expansion. And again, for small temperature changes, we can get away with this, that the change in volume is the original volume times 3 alpha delta T. And this comes from the fact that all three of the dimensions of our three-dimensional object are changing, and each one expands uh, via the linear expansion equation. Okay, so this is where the three factors of alpha come from. This is a bit of an approximation, but it works well for small delta T's. And equivalently, we can state that as the new volume is the old volume times 1 plus 3 alpha delta T. Okay, so you could apply this in uh, situations, for instance, like you just fill up your gas tank at the, uh, at the gas station, and then you park your car with a totally full gas tank out on a very hot day, and so the car heats up, you know, the road's very, the parking lot's very, very hot, the car heats up, and so everything expands, and the volume of gas will expand, and it 
you could uh, overflow your gas tank if you're not careful there. And you could apply the uh, volume expansion uh, equation in that scenario. Okay, so that is uh, pretty much it for our introduction to uh, temperature and to thermal expansion. And we'll do some, uh, some applications in class when we get there. Oh, right. Of course, V0 here is the original volume, just like L0 is the original volume in our L equation. Okay, so that is it for today.